and welcome to another edition of Mondays with Miles and Friends. I'm Anthony Calhoun along with Scott Beerby from the NCAA, the Associate General Counsel. And good seeing you as always, Scott. Good seeing you. All Glad right. To be here. here we go. First things first, <laughs> what is the clean zone? Clean zone is a term of art we use for um, monitoring activity around a venue where a Final Four typically is going to be held. So it manages uh, public ways and exterior um, property. Okay, and so uh, and what you mean by that? I mean you go to a lot of different events from the NFL to Major League Baseball. You'll see signage everywhere. That's not the case with NCAA championships, right? That's right. The concepts are the the NFL has a Super Bowl clean zone, it, but it works differently than ours. Ours is really meant to be a um, a look and feel to have this uh, have the city represented most positively without a lot of clutter, a yeah. commercial clutter, signage, inflatables. We want to manage those in, in partnership with the city where we're uh, holding an event. Yeah, and I think of, when I think of this, I always think of like uh, the masters, if you will, because I've been down to Augusta and, you know, you don't see hardly any signage at all besides yeah. the masters. And you think about the NCAA because if you equate the two and your championships compared to the masters, very similar in a way. Similar. We like, we like that model. You know, certainly we want local businesses to attract fans and, and do the best they can uh, while fans are in town. Um, but we, again, want them to do that in a way that um, reflects positively on the city's image and not, not create a flea market, if you will, of lots of things being distributed and handed out without any real control about what, what's going on. Yeah, when I think of uh, that, I kind of think of like integrity because it, it seems like to me it's really the NCAA setting the highest standard for integrity. Why is it important to have these clean zones, would you say? Well, we think um, that there are certainly some safety components to it because um, as people are around the venue distributing things or, or holding up signs and what have you, um, that attracts crowds and clusters of people, um, may, may restrict the ingress and egress of getting into of the facility. Um, so, so we were concerned about keeping crowds moving. We're concerned about blocking public ways, so mm -hmm. we don't want a lot of peddlers and, and things out there. Um, so we want them in, in places where we know where they are. They can get a permit if, if they go through the right process, and then they're legit to sell or distribute as, as part, of, uh, part of our event. Yeah. What are the rules, if you will, of just for as the pre-existing uh, pre signage uh, in, in different arenas for your championships? Yeah. We, um, so inside the arena, um, we will uh, um, clean that of virtually all uh, sponsorships. So what you would see for a regular season NFL game uh, will not be there for a Final Four. Um, and uh, outside of the naming rights, uh, where there will be a reference to where the, you know, what stadium it is. Yeah. Uh, but um, so, so inside the venue, it's, it's, it's called a clean venue. Um, outside the arena, then we will look at whether um, it's a, if it's a permanent sign, then it's, it continues to exist. It's a, if it's a temporary sign, then it's looked at a little more carefully by the city to figure out why it's there, what's their message, is it a message that we, we like. Yeah, you know how tough the economy is right now. Now, some critics will say um, that they don't feel like it's the NCA's uh, right, if you will, to be able to come in and patrol uh, some of their signages um, used in the whole cities. How do, you, how do you respond to something like that? Yeah. Because everyone's trying to, you know, to, to, you know, they need the advertisement to help, you know, as far as the economy and situation, but how would you respond to that? Sure, we and, and we're sensitive to that. So you know, we we try as best we can to uh, educate the bit local business community about what's okay and what's not okay because we don't want people spending a lot of money on signs that we're going to ask to be taken down. We want them to do it the right way. So, um, but but ultimately, it's our event, and so when um, when a city um, bids to host a Final Four, for example they make commitments on behalf of the business community that this will be their best foot forward and we take we hold yeah. them to that so but at the same time you know we we do, we want people to attract fans we it's not like we don't want people to shop or dine or frequent um, businesses in a town yeah. they just shouldn't use our marks for instance uh, in in attracting those those yeah. fans into the place and real quick before we let you go um, what has been the reaction I mean you've been doing this for the 10 years with mm -hmm. the NCAA what has been the reaction with the different host cities over the years it seems like everyone's been able to, to adapt to this right yeah I, you know cities um, most many most of the cities we go to are used to holding large events right and so uh, our 
techniques aren't all that unusual. Um, so if we were to, um, again, have a clean zone, um, a city hosting a Super Bowl will we'll be familiar with that concept or an NBA All-Star game. Um, but it will be, um, but w our standards will be a little different. All right, Scott, thank you so much for your time. Always good seeing you. Thank and you. The clean zone, that's clean right, zone. the clean zone. And, <laughs> and don't forget, if you have any questions for us or any emails of suggestions of topics we should talk about each week here, don't forget to email those to us here at the a double A zone, that is. Yeah. So we've got a clean zone and the double A there zone. We go. All right, that's it for this week's edition of Mondays with Miles and Friends. I'm Anthony Calhoun. We'll see you next week. Have a good one.